It's a new week. It's Monday. It's puck time. Hockey talk. Best hockey sports gambling show in the world. You can find it every day at Wager Talk TV, our YouTube channel, and me. Well, I'm Lawrence Presman. They call me the Prez, co founder of Wager Talk Media. And we got the kids with us today Alex B. Smith and Andrew McGinnis. And hopefully it'll be as fun a show as last Friday. Let's bring the boys in and get going. Uh, Andrew, did you wake up the sa- just as good today as Friday? <laughs> it was a good sleep, but unfortunately not, not the same way to wake up. So uh, we'll see if I can get that reoccurring more often, but uh, not today. Well, you know, I mean, listen, the great thing for Alex is he doesn't need another person to wake him up the way he wants to be woken up. He just needs his <laughs> Coke. <laughs> I guess so. I mean, it would be nice to have some uh, extra, you know, uh, people in the bedroom every now and then. But, hey, you know, things happen. I had a great weekend. Uh, There's that, you know, uh, all the soda drinking aside. I I was able to cash quite a few tickets over the weekend. So looking forward to keeping more of that going uh, in the evening. Yeah, we've got a promotion for you, uh, Alex, and for you, Andrew. Um, And uh, it's going to be a fun show. Only two games today, so... Uh, Let's give out the first promotion. And this one, guys, uh, lasts today. Today only. That's it. You don't buy it today, you don't get it. Uh, Andrew599. $599 for uh, Andrew's hoops, college basketball, and NBA until the All-Star break. Uh, To give you perspective, this is regularly priced at $999. It's $400 off. I use the promo code Andrew599, and Andrew is up double-digit profit in the NBA and is a perfect 4-0 and in college basketball. Uh, promo code Andrew599. Andrew, do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, as far as the college basketball goes, Prez, uh, you know, I, I'm lower volume, but I go, you know, just pick my spots. I waited around between 8 and 10 days to uh, kind of just feel out the league uh, you know, everyone knows me for NHL, CFL and stuff like that, but I've gotten really into the college stuff these days and uh, I'm definitely not going to be that guy for you giving out five to ten picks a night. It's going to be one solid pick a night uh, in the NCAA. There's so many options, so many games, uh, and I try and find that one spot uh, each and every night for my clients. Uh, he's Andrew McGinnis. You can find him at Sports Memo. Uh, boys. Two games, as I spoke about. Let's get into the first one. Washington minus 230 versus Anaheim. Anaheim's a surprising 10-9 and team on the year. I mean, obviously not a great record, but Hal, it's just as good as the Leafs. Uh, Washington, 15-3. and Uh, This team just looks so good right now. Uh, The over and under is six. And Alex, I'll go to you first. Uh, What do you like in this game? The only thing I could look at here would be Washington and regulation, and you're still going to be laying quite a price with that, you're looking yeah. at $1. fifty, $1. fifty-five. Uh, Anaheim's been absolutely brutal as of late. They had a great yeah. start. Uh, everything was going well for them, but we talk about it constantly on the show. The key to you know Anaheim's success or failure relies between the pipes with John Gibson, and he's been getting overworked and, and overmatched, and the defensemen in front aren't helping out. Hampus uh josh manton being out long term uh that those are two key pieces i think pieces that uh don't get talked about as often enough and with their absence i mean they were able to win against st louis in their last game but that snapped a five game losing streak where they had been giving up three or more goals uh in each of those losses so uh washington we know how they can turn things on offensively especially at home uh the only way i would look here capitals and regulation yeah andrew look i'm with alex i mean Anaheim, they've lost, they lost five in a row. Then they went in, uh, then they went and beat St. Louis 4-1. And Washington, I mean, this team just is one of the best in the league, if not the best. Uh, Unless they play Montreal, right? When they were plus 145 dogs. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Um, anyway. <laughs> I had to say it, Perez. I had to say I like it. Washington minus two and a half goals here. It's plus 200. Uh, I know it means they need to win by three, but I, I can see this game being a 4-1, 5-1 type of a game. I think Anaheim's going to tr- struggle to score. Um, I'm not going to be releasing this play, but I am going to be betting it at Washington minus two and a half goals. I think we're going to see a blowout tonight. What do you like, Andrew? That, that's, a, that's a great price. Uh, 
what what I think about this Anaheim team is that if you wanted to bet on them, Ukraine. Um, you know, earlier in the season, in the uh, like kind of middle of October, late October, they were getting some win- wins together. But now they're kind of losing and struggling against teams that uh, I don't, I'm not really too high on. Uh, you look at their game against Detroit. That was very disappointing to me. Detroit's been a bottom feeder for the past several weeks. And, uh, you know, Anaheim could barely do anything against them. So they're going to be so spotty up and down. And we know Washington's not really that they did against Montreal, uh, they bounced back. Um, you know, we saw what they did against Boston. They grinded it out, came out on top, and even against Philadelphia. Like Alex talks about his yeah. draw bets. I mean, Phil- Washington's you know going to these overtime or shootout periods, but they're getting the job done. The better team always comes out on top. Uh, I don't care if people aren't a fan of a shootout or overtime. Great teams find a way to win. Uh, that's what Washington's you know finding a way to do right now. And you know, I, I would definitely look at regulation here for Washington. I have a slight, slight. Into the because Washington's been catching over tickets left and right, and Anaheim has still been involved in some high scoring games. And you know, they're scoring themselves in their past uh, three games, they scored minimum three goals themselves. Uh, but I just can't really see them containing yeah. Washington, so uh, I'll go with Washington and regulation. But you know, the minus two and a half that's a you know, I can't argue with that. Value. A little bit of sound issues today, don't know why, uh, but uh, we plug on. Uh, guys, remember, head over to sportsmemo.com today only. Alex McGinnis, uh, his college basketball and NBA told the all-star break, $400 off the regular price. Andrew, 599 and now we're going to have a scroll change for Alex. Uh, and Alex, you're on a 12-7 and seven hockey run, 64%. Uh, all sports run in your last 42 bets. Congratulations, brother. I put up a promo for you. Uh, you're right. A week of your plays are $119. I took 40 bucks off. Uh, get a week of Alex B. Smith's plays every sport he does for only $79. Use the promo code Alex seven, nine. Uh, Alex, Arizona hosting the Kings. Quick in that, uh, none of us are a fan of his right now. Uh, Arizona, a pesky 12-7 and seven on the season, uh, hosting an 8-11 and 11 LA Kings team. A uh, minus 180 for the Kings here, Alex. And, you know, this Arizona team, uh, they just find ways to win hockey games. They've won three of their last four. They beat Carolina 3-0, which is impressive given how good they're doing. But the Kings are on a three-game winning streak, including a win over the Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, I'll tell you where I'm looking at this game. I actually, for some reason, see a tie. And I also like under the total of five. Uh, I think uh, this is a big... uh, I think this is going to be a very low-scoring game. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I wouldn't steer you off the off that train at all with the draw. You find it plus two ninety five. Uh, like I said, that's just kind of be Arizona style and even LA style too. Uh, you know, they were able to find ways to they you know got into the overtime with Detroit the other night, got the win there. Uh, they played a lot of one goal games, even the the Vegas game. Uh, they controlled early, but then Vegas got right back into it. So uh, definitely seems like a game that could go past sixty minutes. I would look at the first period over here as well. You got the Coyotes six and three to the first period over the last nine games at home. Uh, you got the Kings six and four to the first period over on the road, twelve and eight overall. Uh, I can see where they're making goals early, and then things kind of slow down. So if you like that under, if you can play it live, wait till after the first period. You might get a one-one hockey yeah. game, and you might get an even better price with that under. Yeah, and the uh, the tie Andrew is uh, plus three ten. So uh, if you parlay that that tie with Washington minus two and a half goals, you're going to have a <laughs> hell of a payout. What do you like in this game? That'd be quite the night. Um, I like the under as well, Prez. And uh, I think that you look at LA's past couple of games here, and it's been really deceiving. You know, they played the Vegas Golden Knights, came out on top by just one goals, but Malcolm Subban was in net. So, you know, that shouldn't even have, uh, you know, that doesn't really count as beating the Vegas Golden Knights. Subban, you know, can't get a win to save his life right now. Their other win was against Detroit, and previous to that was against Minnesota. And we all know what Minnesota's like. Uh, they're up and down, up and down every single night. So I can't really give them any credit um, but what I wanted to do today was look at it because yeah, earlier in the week, last week or week before that, I was giving credit to uh, to Phil Kessel. I was I was saying he's a good leader and doing well for this team, but maybe he can be a good leader. But I was wrong about his stats. This guy has three goals and uh, twelve points. 
uh, so far in 21 games played. That's actually not acceptable at all. Connor Garland with nine goals uh, and 12 points. So Connor Garland is a player that just came out from the QMJHL two years ago, uh, and he's actually five foot seven and barely cracked the roster because everyone thought he was too undersized and could barely do anything. And all these guys like Clayton Keller, uh, you know, Austin Krause, all these guys that are supposed to be scoring for them aren't. And I decided to look last night before I went to bed and just, you know, who's actually getting the job done for Arizona? What's What's been the key to their success? And it, it hasn't been their main guys. It hasn't been their guys that really should be scoring. Right. So I really do see their scoring slowing down. And I like unders with them over the next uh, couple days here for them. I agree 100%. And, then, and you can get a five and a half uh, at a few places with this one. So, uh, you know, if it's still there, I'll go with the under in that one. And, uh, you know, slight lean to L.A. because it's plus 160. Uh, Arizona are major, major false heavy favorites here. Yeah, and, and L.A., if they can win in regulation, is plus 280. Uh, under five at plus 155. So... I actually uh, like that under five at, at 155. I, I honestly could see this being a 2-1, 3-1 hockey game. Uh, guys, big slate tomorrow. Uh, we'll figure out who's going to be on later tonight when I'm on the couch watching the Kansas City Chiefs and the San Diego Chargers. Either of you have an opinion on that football game? No, I'll just be watching it and maybe playing something second half. We'll see how the altitude in Mexico City uh, affects both defenses uh, early on in that one. Yeah, I don't know. Play on that one. Uh, maybe look at. I might be looking at the Chargers. So we'll see. I'll tell you. I don't know if you watched much NFL yesterday. I had a shocking day. Four, one and four, just disgusting. But uh, I just, you know, I I cannot believe the referees. I, I mean, I, I don't know. Is it this year specifically, or every year? I mean, we tend to forget about the years pat going backwards, but. I mean, this pass interference call or no call is, is, from my perspective, ruining the football game. Yeah. I mean, there was a uh, – there. Houston drives the ball down to go up 7 nothing. Uh, pass interference in the end zone, it was the most blatant pass inter- – I mean, literally, the guy got mugged. I mean, mugged. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they even threw the flag and still didn't overturn it. And then there was one in the San Fran-Arizona game that just shocked me. I mean – it was down the right side of the field, probably around the third quarter mark, and the San Francisco wide receiver was literally draped on the defensive back, and it was defensive pass interference. Yeah, the uh, problem is, is that referees are scared to make the big call, you know. But we saw what happened in the playoffs last year to the Saints. I mean, it has to be all called consistently, and they have to regulate it because the problem is. They have no problem calling a P.I. when it's a 10-yard pass, but they're scared to call it when it's a 60-yard bomb down the field. But when it comes down to it, it's the same. You know, it's the, it's the exact, you know, a, a hooking call is the same in the defensive end in hockey as it is in the offensive end on a breakaway. You have to call the, the play the exact same you would no matter what. You see way more P.I. calls happen with 10 to 15-yard passes versus, you know, 60 to 70-yard throws or attempts because referees are scared to change the game. But ultimately, it's actually changing the game if they do not call it yeah. uh, because that was blatant. That was obviously a pass interference. Um, and I had the over in that game, Press. So, <laughs> Yeah, I had Houston. I don't want to talk about yeah. it. You know what? Honestly, I believe you know the league – you can look at college <laughs> too. Football has gotten – become such a, a much faster game in the last five to ten years that maybe they need to have more influence in the booth, have a, a referee crew that's watching video the whole time, watching the same feed that we are watching as fans, and have them work with the, the referees on the field because it seems like the gameplay on the field is getting a little too fast for some of these uh, you know referees. And you know, you look at the NFL, some of those guys are a bit older, you know, that split second call, you know, it, it, it like I said, it's it's down to the wire. Maybe they aren't making those reads as well as they were, say, five, six years ago with the game, like I said, getting faster, you know, uh, offense is getting more complicated, the lineup, just how even looking at, at plays like uh, holding or legal hands in the face, those different things. So maybe you have, uh, you know, just improve the system as a whole with refereeing, not just have the guys on the field, but have somebody, uh, eye in the sky, if you will, watching over things. Yeah, I mean, they're, they've got to do something about it. Andrew, let's end this show with the Grey Cup is set. Um Hamilton versus Winnipeg. 
Yeah, it's, it's a really good story because it's, it's first of all, it's two uh, interesting stories as far as the quarterback position goes. So Jeremiah Masoli was the starting quarterback at the beginning of the season for Hamilton. He goes down with a year-ending injury. Uh, in comes Dane Evans. He's barely seen any action in the CFL. Uh, he leads them to uh, an undefeated season at home, and they no. broke their franchise record. Uh, they broke their franchise record for uh, wins in the regular season. Uh, and, you know, they just have so much depth on offense. But this great cup is going to be all about defense because it's a similar story or a weird story with Winnipeg, actually. You know, they had Matt Nichols go down, and then Chris Strebler came in for them as the backup. Uh, and then Zach Kalaros, who was the goal, uh, the QB for um, Toronto at one point, got traded over. And, and now he was playing uh, for Winnipeg in the past two games. He's led them and looked great for them. And now Chris Strebler and him are going back and forth. This game is going to be settled on defense. But the thing is, you got to look at it. Uh, Winnipeg has been counted out all year. Winnipeg has been cashing tickets as underdogs all year long. If you're looking at this podcast or listening to this podcast and you see an opening line that's pretty, pretty tempting here for Winnipeg, I uh, wouldn't talk you off because this is going to be a close one. Um, you know, Winnipeg has the defense. Uh, if, if Hamilton gets off to a good start, though, they're not going to look back. Um I think people are shocked to see Calgary out, but it's because Calgary did not have the defense this year, and that's what it really wins championships. So CFL is really high scoring as well this year, so you have to be able to get on runs, but get Keith's thoughts when you can. Uh, he's Andrew McGinnis, Alex B. Smith with us. That, my friends, is puck time. Make sure to use our promo codes, Alex79 for $79 for a week of all his plays, and Andrew499. For uh, $499 uh, to get, no, $599. Andrew, $599. I, I've kind of lost it a little bit. Andrew, $599, uh, all his college hoops and NBA until the NBA All Star break for $400 off. That goes only today. Tweet it out, boys. Thanks for a great show. We'll see you tomorrow. And uh, guys, make sure to check out. Uh, the betting edge today, Marco and I uh, do a quick look back over uh, the NFL week and a look forward to uh, the lines that are already up for week 12. I'm the Prez. Thank you for watching. Make sure to comment and post. Catch us all on Twitter. I'm at Prez Wager Talk. Boys, take care of yourselves.